common congratulations to you on this series. This is our first time chatting and I'm so excited to chat with you. I've been a fan of your work for so long and I was so excited knowing that you were gonna be in this series. I, I absolutely loved it. Thank you, Lauren. It's great to meet you and thanks for your words. Yeah, yeah, great to meet you too. I have to know, how many times did you go up and down those steps? <laughs> I mean, at some point, I definitely was not counting, you know, it had been like, and you know, I actually, you know, I, I try to keep myself in condition and fit, but going up <laughs> and down them stairs is no joke for real, like, you know, but you know, I ain't gonna cry about like, you know, okay, Sims, Sims ain't no little punk, so it's like, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? Yeah, you absolutely killed it as Sims. Like you have such a commanding presence on screen. And it just got me thinking about your career and your filmography because you've literally been in every single genre, drama, comedy, superhero, theater. Obviously you're an artist too. And I'm curious, do you gravitate towards one particular genre or medium as an artist? Or is it really just about the role, the project, the character? I gravitate to drama, um, to be honest. I love wow. drama and yeah, and thriller type of films. Like those are my some of my favorites to watch and to be a part of. Uh, but you know, essentially, why why I've done different types is because like I look for just great projects and and things that where the writing is exceptional and the character that I could play can be something unique and give me a chance to to expand as, a, as an actor and, and and show these dimensions. Like I was, for me, I was excited about Silo because I read the, the, the scripts and I was like, wait, this is incredible. But I also was like, this is like a character I never had an opportunity to play before. Yeah, he has a heavy thing about him and and he has a weight to him that's, that's like, okay, he's enforcing things in this Silo, but he also is, cares about his family, he also believes and what he is fighting for is for the greater cause. So I was really into it, and I know that, God willing, if we get a season two and the show continues to go on, that this character can really evolve and grow. I'm really hoping for a season two because I would love to see more of Sim. So obviously, you know, your character and Rebecca Ferguson's character, Juliet, they're kind of at odds the entire series, but what was it like on set between the two of you? What was it like working together? Uh, Rebecca, she will. She loves to pop junk. She'll talk. She'll talk a lot of stuff to you. But and I love that, and it made me feel at home because that's how I grew up. She also is just a warm, just good spirit. She she don't let you get by with no fake stuff, which is another thing I love. Um, mm -hmm. And she just is. She's a really talented person and woman. And and I was watching her doing some. Uh, a, a quick fight scene she had, and I was like, man, this woman is at a different level. Like, she has that thing about her where she's a great and talented actress, but also just has that thing, like, the physicality that can, like, you feel like, oh, yeah, she'll whoop this person. She could whoop. And I love that. Like, it's a, it's a certain, it's these dynamics about her that she, she just, she has it. I love that. Well, last question for you, because they are going to wrap me. I'm curious, this air, this interview is going to be airing in Baltimore. Have you been to Baltimore, performed in Baltimore? You have a lot of fans in Baltimore. Yes. Well, Baltimore at one point for me was like a second home because I stayed there filming a movie I, I did that was based in Baltimore called Love. And I really yeah. connected with, with my man Sean Banks out there. And I just got so much love for, for my people in Baltimore. Um, you know, I, I went all throughout the city just learning about the city. And, uh, you know, the people from Park Heights to Mondawmin Mall and all the, you know, some of the hoods out there. I think Forest Hill is a nice area out there. But it was like, yeah, Baltimore, I got love. I, I really related to Baltimore because it felt blue collar to me, like the way I grew up. Um, so respect to everybody out there in Baltimore. I love that. You you literally have a lot of great memories there and visited a lot, it sounds like. Common, thank you so much for your time today. I cannot wait for fans to see your performance in Silo, and I can't wait to see what you're going to be doing next. I loved you and Never Have I Ever uh, as uh, well, season two. I wanted you to be, I want you to be in more. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I love doing that show also, so I hope I get a chance to, but 
Yeah. I'm super geeked about Silo. Thank you, Lauren, for talking. It's great to meet you. Great to meet you, too. Thank you so much. Bye. Peace. Congratulations to the two of you on this incredible series. It was so addicting, and I thought the production design was absolutely amazing. So I'm curious for you, Graham, what was it like for you to create that production? And Hugh, when you step on to set for the first time, do you really feel like you're in your own world in a way? <laughs> Why don't we flip that? We'll start with you. Okay. Because, because his is the more dramatic story. It was, yeah, walking into the silo for the first time was insane. Uh, when you're writing something like this, you never think it's going to be physically built. But they actually built, you know, the entire width of the silo, three stories high, and you could walk in it and walk the stairs. And uh, the first time I saw it, it was still plywood going up and, and I-beams. And uh, I, you know, had on a hard hat and high-vis jacket, and I just jumped in with the carpenters and started putting some of the stairs in with them. And it was really more than just the uh, symbolism of the person who kind of uh, wrote these first words, but got to put in these first steps. It was a very emotional experience for me and uh, just um, something I'll never forget, highlight of my career. So, yeah, yeah the big set, the, the, the A stage, as we call it, is, is very impressive. When we take people on tours, that's where we end up. We don't start there. Um, but, you know, it's, you, it's building it one little bit at a time. The first thing, Morton Tildum, who directed the first three episodes, he and I were looking for a production designer, and we worked with this guy, uh, Gavin Boquette. And it, it, was, it was his design. And we would refine things, what about this, what about that? But Gavin really came up with the way that the, the central shaft of the silo would look like. And that, that becomes the central image. You know, that's the thing that, because when you read the books, that's what you're, you're thinking about. It's this big spiral staircase down the center of uh, down the center of this gigantic silo. It turns out my wife loves spiral staircases, so Me I think too. she loves. Yeah, Shay does too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I do too. You do too. Yeah. It's like to Connie, this is like the best show ever made because it's got a gigantic spiral staircase all the way down a mile. That's a dream, but um, you know, and for the writers and and the actors walking onto that set um, and all the other sets really helps put people in the mood for the show and what it's about, that you do really feel like you're in this other world. That I feels, that still feels kind of familiar. Sorry. Yeah, I was gonna say, I can't wait to ask Common how many times he went up and down those steps because I'm true, <laughs> I know those actors were going up and down those steps a lot. I'm, I'm a huge Rebecca Ferguson fan, so I'm like that, I was so excited when I saw that she was gonna be doing the series. Hugh, I'm curious for you, did you give any particular insight to Rebecca or Common on the characters of Juliet and Sims, something that they may not have picked up in your novels. Did you give them any particular character insight that you felt like they used in their performance? Yeah, Rebecca and I had uh, amazing conversations before the first day of shooting, just what makes Juliet tick and what the themes were of the story. And uh, she really geeked out about it all. And, you know, she, which I think what she's really loved about this is not just the chance to you know, headline a big series, but to be an executive producer and bring her creativity to it. So she does, she's not just following orders, which would be hard to play Juliet and also be someone following orders. She gets to be Juliet in the production and be like, hey, what about this and what about that? And um, she's, she's so sharp. Um, we've had incredible deep conversations about human nature and and what makes people tick and why these characters are motivated the way they are. And when you see her performance, you realize she's ingested all of that and, and bringing it to her character. I love that. Well, I'm hoping for a season two, multiple seasons. Graham and Hugh, congratulations to the two of you. Graham, I have to say, whenever I ask people what their favorite TV show is, so many people answer Justified. So I have to say that show is still super popular today. And I have so many friends who love that show. I mean, it's, it's incredible. Well, there's another eight episodes coming out this summer on FX, and I'll get shot by my friends at Apple TV Plus for talking about another show, but they're good. It's a good Oh, movie. my gosh. The, the fans are going to be so excited. Again, congratulations to the two of you, and I cannot wait for fans and audiences to see Silo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both.